Today I want to talk about Frigate and I want to talk about using Double Take, which is a unified API and API that allows you to train and process images for use in facial recognition. So I've been using it for a couple days and this is going to be a little bit different uh, type of video from what I'm normally doing. I'm going to talk more about what my experience is in this video and maybe later on we'll do a little more how to on how I set it up because I've been playing with it for the last couple days and it hasn't been something that I'm really excited about. I was uh, on the edge about making a video anyway on this because I'm having issues with it or it's, it's just not living up to my expectation of what I want it to do. And with AI and facial recognition, that's not uncommon. You're gonna have some learning that has to be done and it's not gonna be perfect. So let's go into what Double Take is first. This is the Double Take uh, GitHub page. And let's just go through a little bit of the features here. As I mentioned, this is a unified UI and API for processing and training images for facial recognition. It doesn't actually do the work it relies on detectors to do the work, but it gives you a very nice, easy, convenient way to train images and do other stuff with them. So there, the, uh, the question is, why would you do this? Uh, there's a lot of great software to perform the actual facial recognition, but they all behave differently. Double Take was created to take the complexities of those and combine them into an easy to use UI. So basically uh, Double Take is a UI for detection services. And it talks about a lot of the, sponsor, uh, the, the features here. And one of the features you'll notice here is a an Home Assistant add-on. I tried and tried and tried to use the Home Assistant add-on on, on my Odroid N2 Plus. And I, ha I had an issue with it where it would just cause my Odroid to slow down to a crawl, so much to the point that I had to log in and kill the process via SSH because I couldn't get back into the box. I don't know that that's everybody's experience. I don't really understand what's going on because a lot of the forums I've read talk about double take being a very low end or low uh, consumption type of application and it shouldn't do that. So something's going on with my box or I've got too many things running on my Odroid already. So I've detached that and run that in a Docker container. I am running it on a virtual machine on my Windows desktop. So I'm running it in a Ubuntu virtual machine in VirtualBox. So I've virtualized it into a Docker container or into a Docker uh, system running in that VM. Now you can also run it on Docker under Windows directly if you want to do that or a number of other ways. And you may have success with the add-on as well. Has this architecture support? Uh, the detectors it uses are DeepStack, CompraFace, and FaceBox and it does support the Frigate in VR. And that is what I'm running. I have a number of videos on Frigate, how I've got Frigate set up. Frigate's been running well for a while. Frigate does object detection very well. I don't have to do anything for object detection, but what I wanted to try to do was layer some face detection or person uh, recognition on top of that, uh, uh, that Frigate stuff that it's doing. It talks about uh, how you set things up here. So we go through all the setups. It has the ability to do notifications with Home Assistant for various things that go on with uh, the double take. And then of course it publishes its results to uh, sensors via MQTT. So you need to have MQTT up and running. And finally, you can use the Gotify service, which I actually have up and running as well. This is Gotify or Godify. I would say Gotify and someone will correct me as they have in my other videos on how I pronounce things. But this gives you uh, an ability to send notifications to this Gotify service. I am also running Gotify on, in a Docker container on my VM. So I'm running uh, DeepStack, uh, CompraFace, and uh, Gotify and DoubleTake all on my VM on my Windows desktop. So I'm using VirtualBox for that. You can go through and read the documentation here on all of this, um, but it's very easy to get up and running. Again, we're not gonna talk so much about getting it up and running in this video. On a follow-up video, if there's enough interest in this, I'll go through how I set up my Docker containers and everything else. I just wanna kinda of talk through briefly how uh, I perceive this to be working for me. Now, this is the interface for Double Take, And this is what happens whenever you see images that are being detected. It only shows this if a face is picked up in the image. I could have Frigate notify me uh, uh, whenever there's activity, uh, an object detected or something else, it will do that. But if there's no face detected by one of the detectors, uh, CompraFace uh, or in my case, DeepStack, either one of those, 
it will not show here, but these have picked up faces and you can see them here. Now, one of the first things I wanna talk about is the size of the image. Uh, if I walk into the room, my face is really tiny on here. And you'll notice here that this is pink. And what this tells me uh, is that it didn't, it, even though it might have detected me, the confidence is too low for a specific reason. And one of the, the, one of the checks it performs is the size of the box area. If you have a teeny tiny box area, it's just not going to be as accurate as having something like this size box. So here it says the box area is too low. And so it marks it as, uh, it, it doesn't send it through as I detected something, even though it shows it here. When you have a green box and um, a face detection or a name or a percentage here, then what you get is an actual, an actual detection. And so for these two faces here, because they were up close, I'm getting myself detected. What this means is for most of my cameras uh, on Frigate, these are the size images that I'm going to get. And even though I have this particular camera set to crop these images at a size of 500, the picture isn't good enough for me to be able to have the system reliably do anything with it. And this is face detection going into a room. So if you're doing presence detection in a room, you would have to get up and close and personal to the camera, or you'd have to, to adjust the camera so it only sees a small area here so that the face is bigger. This is my first issue with this kind of face detection. If we look at my cameras uh, for Frigate, you'll see that all of these cameras um, are in a wide area. And even though it pulls in snapshots of these areas, it just isn't going to pick it up well enough so far that I've seen to do this. Now I'm gonna to continue to play with it and see if I can uh, train it to make it a little bit better. There are ways to change the size of this box. So if, for example, the default is 10,000 for the size of the, or for the box area. I can make the box area a thousand and have it pick it up, but you're gonna get a lot of false positives. So that's part one. I, I kind of brought this up kind of out of order because I wanted to show you this screen since I'm already here. In this interface, which is really nice, it's a very nice interface for training. If I wanted to train this image here, or any image for that matter, all I have to do is click on this box and I can pull down one of these names, for uh, instance, my name, and I can click on train and it's gonna ask me if I wanna train this file. And if I click on yes, it's gonna go in here and now it's gonna start training my files. This is a super easy way to tell your detectors uh, what images to use for what particular purpose. And you create a folder for each person or thing that you wanna train or each person. So I would call this, you know, if I had a delivery person that was always the same and I knew their name, I would create a delivery folder. And then I could just pick these images and train them into the, into the delivery folder. So another way to train your uh, images here using this deep stack interface, or this, I'm sorry, this double take interface is to upload files. I pick a folder, I click upload, and then I can pick some images here from this list. So I'll just sort of pick a couple of my names, a couple of my images, and I will click on open. And what it's gonna do is start training automatically. And I picked four images, but you see eight here. It's because I have two detectors configured right now. I have a deep stack detector and I have a Comperface detector. And I'm using both of those at the same time right now because I wanna see which one's better. There's been a lot of discussion uh, stating that Comperface is actually better than deep stack. And so far I am seeing that. I think Comperface does a better job of detecting faces. Now the training time will depend on how many images you put in there and also how busy your system is. So we'll let that train for a few minutes and we'll come back to it. The Compra face is, the, uh, is an open source face recognition system. And again, it's a Docker container. There's an official website for it as well. And it's, like I said, it's a free and open source uh, recognition system that can easily integrate into any system. And uh, DoubleTake allows you to use that as well as uh, Facebox, I think is the other one, and, and the DeepStack. 
So we're using uh, using both of those, and I think again that uh, Comperface actually works better than DeepStack. Once these images are trained, you'll see them in your trained uh, folder here, and then it'll start using those to match against what's coming in. And these are the images that I chose uh, for that. Now DeepStack has been having issues even now. It's got some timeout issues, so you'll notice that it's trained for Comperface, but it's not trained for DeepStack. And that's because uh, there are timeout issues with Deep uh, DeepStack. Uh, as I've played with this over the last couple of days, I'm pretty sure I'm just going to get rid of DeepStack and let Copperface do all the work because it seems to be the best. Now, if you were to have photos, uh, photos that come up as unknown here, you can train them and then you can rescan them here or reprocess the images. And those reprocessed images will then hopefully come back to the person you just trained or a person that you have in your trained folder. So we have the main interface for matches, and this is in, this does live updates. Uh, you can either enable or disable live updates. And then you can also disable or disable this filtering, disable or enable the filtering. And I can choose who I have uh, for matches or misses, uh, what kind of detector I'm using, which camera they come in on, and then all these other settings. So the configuration of Double Take is done through the UI as well. Typically, you'll do that first. I'm kind of doing everything backwards because I'm showing you what's happening as we go along in the wrong order. But you would come to config first, and in the configuration, once you're in the configuration, you would set your MQTT host, username and password. You would set your frigate URL with its port, make sure you're using the right port. And there are some settings that you can set within here that are talked about within this configuration page, both on GitHub and the Docker page. You can leave everything as default to start with and then come back later on and do stuff with it if you need to change it. I added a couple of things here uh, under events. I wanted attempts uh, to be no latest snapshot because I was getting multiple notices for the snapshot. I wanted, I mean, the, uh, the latest image. So you get latest image, snapshots, and MQTT if you have that enabled. The latest image is what shows up as the frigate is sending it in. And then you have the snapshot, which is the snapshot that you get from frigate. And then you have MQTT, which is then sent once everything is processed. The thing about MQTT is there's quite a delay because it has to finish the event before it sends it in. So if you want to do snapshots, um, or if you don't want to do uh, latest, at least do snapshots. And I've commented it out because it does a default of 10. And again, all this is set in here, and it talks about these types of changes that you can make. And these changes actually allow you to set things like the latest. So this is the number of times Double Take will request a frigate image for facial recognition, number of times it will request a frigate snapshot, and the number of times, or um, whether it processes images from the MQTT topic. And then you can add a delay expressed in seconds between each detection loop. Right now it's set to default of one. These are all defaults. So MQTT is false by default, and then it'll do the last five snapshots, the last five uh, latest photos from Frigate to try to process the image. Change those as you need to, but it's a lot of tweaking and a lot of, set of that kind of thing you need to do to make sure that you get it just the way you want it. And then you set up your detectors. You've got your Comperface detector. Again, I'm running these on a VM, so there's my local IP with the port number. And then you generate a key for Comperface since these are only accessible inside my network, I'm not worried about the key and uh, tokens being exposed in this video. Uh, that's okay. I can change those at will and probably will after the video is filmed. DeepStack, same thing. You can run DeepStack uh, and then you can set a key and a timeout. Keys are not used by default, so I would leave that blank unless you really need it. And then I've got my Godify or Godify URL, which is also running with a token. And that's what sends my Godify images or notifications to my GoToFi service, which I'm listening to on a browser and also on my phone. So that's my configuration. It's super simple to set up. And uh, you can also do a secrets file here. This secrets file will allow you to set secrets within this configuration file. And it also pulls your secrets file if you do this as a Home Assistant add-on. Now there's a Home Assistant add-on for double take and Comperface and DeepStack, and of course, MQTT and Frigate both have add-ons. You can run all of those on your Home Assistant device if you have enough horsepower. I just don't have enough horsepower to do everything. And by the way, while I'm thinking about it, uh, you can see instant status of all your connections up here. So everything you have configured here will show up here. My double takes running, my MQTT is running. DeepStack 
keeps getting a timeout. And that's what we talked about. I've seen some discussion about this in recent uh, comments that there's a timeout issue for some reason with DeepStack, but I'm running both of these. So really, I'll probably again get rid of DeepStack and just run Copperface. So as images come in from Frigate, Double Take is gonna go grab those images, send them to the processors, the detectors for processing, and then come back with this uh, kind of display right here where you see uh, the images that it picks up with faces in it and then gives you an indication of whether or not they actually worked. You can set up notifications in Home Assistant for this as well. I am still playing with that and haven't quite tweaked it. So stay tuned for another video. And I keep saying I'm going to show you all the configuration later. I probably will. I want to give you an idea of this. I want to hear comments about this. I want to hear from you whether or not you this is something that uh, is even useful to you. Do you have uses for facial recognition? Does your environment allow you to set up cameras that are close in enough to give you a good image so that you can get facial recognition? If I'm looking at people walking down the street on my frigate cameras, for example, and I see this image here, someone's walking down this street right here, I'm not gonna see them. It's not gonna pick them up. There's no way for my camera to zoom in here and pick up people on the street. They would have to walk right up in this area right here for me to be able to have that useful. Even out here may not be enough. And it just really depends on your, your angle of what you're looking at. Um, this camera here may not work. So again, I wanna hear what your thoughts are on whether or not this is useful. Do you want to see me uh, show you my config, how I set up the Docker containers and everything? Cause I will run through that from scratch again if you would like me to do that. Let me know what you think about this in the comments below. Let me know if you're using Double Take, Deep Stack, Compraface. Let me know if you're using the add-ons in Home Assistant or you're using a standalone in what kind of environment. Throw all that in the comments. Let's have a discussion about this because if I'm doing this wrong and it's likely I might be, I wanna know how I can tweak and tune it to make it useful. I would, I think one very simple use case for me is I don't wanna be alerted when my family's walking around in any of the images here. I don't, I don't need to be alerted when they're doing stuff here. I wanna be alerted when there's an unknown face that pops up. So if I can say, okay, with reliable results, it picks up my family or whoever I want in the images as people I know and everyone else becomes unknown, that would be fine. I know how to alert on that, but I just can't get the thing to detect because the image sizes are too small. And maybe I haven't trained it enough. I'm using high quality images from either selfies or photos. I'm not using camera images to show it because if you use camera images and they're too small, the, you're gonna get a, an unreliable result as well. So tell me about it. I know this wasn't a big how-to video. It's just a quick talk about what Frigate uh, and Double Take and Deep Stack and Compraface have done for me in the last couple of days. I love the work that's going on. I don't want to minimize the amount of work that's been going on. I think this is an excellent uh, start for this. I just need to know how to make it better for my use cases. And maybe I have to have a zoom, uh, zoomable camera. Maybe I have to have a different type of camera. Uh, all that kind of stuff, just to see if I get reliable results, or maybe my use case isn't valid for what this is used for. So with that, let me go ahead and end the video here. Again, it's a little bit different than what I'm used to, to filming for you. It's not a big how-to, but if there's enough interest, I will build the entire configuration of what I'm using from start to finish on a separate video. If you're not a subscriber, uh, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Uh, thank you for watching. If you liked the video, hit that thumbs up and uh, channel memberships are available for you as well if you would like to contribute and support the channel. And we'll see you on the next one.